So as of this video, Bedwars has 35 kits and I doubt the developers are gonna stop there. With 35 kits comes a constant need for balance. And while some of these kits just have had balance issues since they were released, making them pretty bad. And in some cases, some aren't so bad, but could use a little TLC. I recently made a kit tier list rating all 35 kits. If you haven't caught that, I'll link that in the description below so you can check it out. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the worst kits and what the devs could do to make them worth having. And not just worth having, but flipping them to being a top tier kit. Before we dive into this, don't forget to smash that subscribe button until it turns gray and like the video if you like air. Come on, if you don't like air, what is wrong with you? So the first kit we're gonna cover is the Infernal Shielder. No surprise here, this kit has been bad since the very beginning of its release and in fact, it was worse than it is now. Before when it first came out, you would take full damage from swords while shielded and now it at least mitigates damage a bit. Since the Infernal Shielder is fire themed, naturally the change I'd recommend is adding fire damage to the kit. To make sure the kit doesn't become too powerful too quickly, what I would probably do is add something like the Barbarian's Rage. So essentially what you need in order to be able to even unlock the first level of fire, you would need to build up enough rage, kind of like getting the stone sword with the Barbarian. So build up enough rage and you can unlock the first level of fire, kind of like fire one, like the enchantments. The next level after that would be fire two and obviously fire three as you build up the rage. And of course you can lose these abilities. If you die, you can lose a bunch of rage, right? Similar to barbarian. The benefits of this is that one, you don't need to rely on an enchantment table to be able to get damage or at least fire damage. Two, if the developers ever remove the enchantment tables, this kit is still really great. And three, the rage aspect of this kit would make it much more fun to use. Alternatively, since this kit is all about shielding, I'd either make it so that you could buy a charge shield variant of his shield or make it so he's invulnerable to enchantments. So if you were to take, you know, say static damage or fire damage or even void, you wouldn't be affected by it at all. So that would be really, really great for ballooners, um, especially since you'd be invulnerable to those effects. So the nice thing about these changes is what we're talking about is already code or at least set up in the game. It's not like, you know, we're asking them to create any new functionality for this. It just basically be repurposing some aspects from, you know, Barbarian and repurposing some aspects from enchantment tables. The next kit we're going to be talking about is Jack, which was the second to the last worst kit in my recent video. This kit looks absolutely amazing. I mean, it's just beautiful. It also has like kind of a lighting effect. I don't know if you notice that in dark areas, he lights up, but his abilities are incredibly dry. And not only that, it's just really built to troll teammates. Like the, the fact that you can damage your teammates is really, really bad. You shouldn't be able to damage your teammates at all in this game. Otherwise, it's just a natural progression for trolls and griefers. The damage that Oil makes is really just bad. It's terrible, and it doesn't really do enough damage to really do much other than annoy players and enemies. It's just kind of like, oh, someone threw that at me. I'm just gonna hop over it. It's not really powerful. It's not scary. It's just annoying. The obvious fix here would be first, make it so that this blob doesn't do any damage to teammates. It's just a no brainer. Second, what I would probably do is either make it so that it does more damage or it sticks you to it for a moment. So you need to be able to take a lot more damage than you currently do. Now, um, fun fact, if you were to stack the oil blobs, it does a ton of damage. Like if you shoot like a ton of them on top of each other, it does insane damage. It's almost like getting suffocated. It's really, really crazy, but you have to have so many emeralds to be able to do that. And it's just, not enough people can still just jump off of it you know if they get a little bit of damage they're going to run away and jump off of it so what i would do is either that or throw the oil blob away altogether and use this system instead because we're talking about jack who kind of looks like a scarecrow but he's more of a jack-o-lantern scarecrow you could do something that's a little bit more fear-based so imagine you know similar to yeti so i don't know if you're familiar with yeti but with yeti you can run up and do a roar and it converts all of the blocks nearby into ice for a moment. And we can do something similar with the Jack where it's actually um, fear-based. So what you do is you run up to a team who is fairly close to you. You hit a button and it creates fear in all of the people around you, making them just kind of run around without any kind of control of movement. So the movement would just be automatic. They wouldn't be able to control. They can still like swing their swords. They can still aim. They can still, you know, shoot but they can't control their body movement, which could lead to some really, really funny situations where people are randomly walking off into the void and it would be so annoying. But this kit would be so good if they made that change. Next up, let's talk about Lassie. This kit can be decent, but in my experience, it's easy to take out Lassie players. I haven't really found that many skilled ones. Lassie's lasso is not only slow, but it lacks really good range, making it really hard for you to pull players to you. The easy fix would be increase the range of the lasso. I mean, obvious, make it a lot longer and add ragdoll to players who get affected by it. Now, when the kit was first released, 
Lassie was crazy, crazy powerful because of the ragdoll effect. So at launch, there was a ragdoll effect that came with it, basically making players roll around and not be able to get back up for a moment. It took like a second. You had to keep jumping. And it was, I thought it was a bug. I don't know if it was a bug or if it was intentional by design at first, but it was really great because you could basically pull someone down from, you know, the top of a bridge and make them ragdoll. And now only really used by players who don't know what they're doing or want to throw and just troll. They don't really care about winning, but making a couple of these tweaks would make this kit really, really good and possibly mid tier, especially if the range was increased and the ragdoll effect. If we can't get the ragdoll effect, what I would do is make it, you know, cause more damage, potentially stun the player longer, or just make like a crazy, crazy knockback. But opposite of a knockback, it would be like more like a knock to you. It'd be a crazy, crazy pull towards you. Next up is Trapper, a kit that I really had high hopes for and one I had predicted that would actually be added to the game. The main issue with Trapper is that the traps are very apparent and weak. So even if you get hit by a trap, it barely lasts for more than half a second, it seems like. Players don't really take a whole lot of damage and they're rarely phased by it that I've noticed. Like I've, I've trapped so many people like two, three times and they're just barely phased by it. The other issue is that the trap is very easy to spot or you know just see as you're going around. You can just, ju just jump over them. They're not hard to avoid. If it was invisible, it'd be impossible for you know enemies to see, and you'd easily get trapped crossing bridges. If the devs made them invisible and caused a longer trap time, then this kit would be insanely good both as a defensive kit and for offense. Now Cletus, our retired farmer, is hoping to one day make a comeback. The issue with Cletus is that it costs so much to make a carrot crop or even a watermelon crop. The time it takes to grow these and harvest them is the main issue, which makes fishermen and beekeepers so much more worthwhile since the beehive is constantly going. What I would do for Cletus is add a watering can to the shop that Cletus can buy, which lets him water his crops to speed up their generation. This isn't really a new idea because Islands has it for speeding up crop growth already. This would just make the crops grow so much faster, making it just as appealing as other kits. The other big elephant in the room is that Cletus is the only game pass kit that does this, whereas all the others are battle pass kits that can't really be accessed if you just came to the game brand new, fresh. There's no way you'd ever be able to get those kits. That's not really fair to new players or existing if you can't get them. Next is a kit that isn't exactly bad, but could be better, and that's Vulcan. Vulcan had a pretty bad response at its release, despite my own excitement for it, simply because of the fact that it wasn't very powerful. In the defense of the devs, though, some of these kits aren't always meant to be powerful, and instead, they're designed for fun. However, Vulcan has had enough hate, and I think it's time for him to get a little bit of an upgrade. No pun intended, but I think he needs a turret upgrade system, much like Pyro's Flamethrower. Turrets can be upgraded by kills earned from turrets. You could upgrade the turrets three tiers, or at least three times. The first tier of the upgrade includes more damage from turrets the second tier would be faster firing and finally the third would be fully automated turrets so you can imagine if that turret's automated so you don't have to sit in it that would actually be really really powerful and maybe a little too overpowered but it would be interesting especially for ballooners you know if someone's ballooning in trying to do a little secret attack you take them out with your automated turret to keep this from becoming unfair especially if someone had like 20 turrets fully upgraded you'd have to upgrade the turrets each individually similar to upgrading individual you know beehives and in most cases this would be really really hard to do because you can make the upgrades get exponential more expensive right so you know two kills three kills for you know those upgrades still Vulcan needs a little bump to be a higher tier kit so this would be really really fun and it would be more powerful Next up is Melody, and this one's gonna be really, really quick. All they need to do to Melody is make it so she can heal herself so that, it, you know, it's actually a fair kit. As soon as they added Grim Reaper and they added the Trinity kit, they pretty much said, you know what, Melody, you're the new Cletus. <laughs> so some people do use Melody still. I think it's a little troll. I think, you, you know, you're better off using Trinity. I think she does give you a little bit of an advantage as a group if she's coming in and healing, but you're kind of throwing one more damage dealer in the trash just to be able to get a little bit more health for another player it doesn't the meta doesn't really work but if she could heal herself she would be so much more powerful as a kit and finally a kit that is actually good and doesn't really need any like buffs or anything like that but um, it does need a fix and that is jade jade has a hammer similar to the void regent where you can jump around the problem is the hammer has a cooldown and you have no idea what the cooldown is. Most players have, you know, memorized the time for her hammer to be able to be ready. And that's just a clear sign that she needs the same indicator that the Void Regent has. And so this would be an easy fix, I think, for them just to add this indicator. It might be a new code. That's probably why it hasn't been done yet, but I think it really, really needs to happen because it's just not fair that Void Regent is better than Jade. So that covers it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm also curious what your own ideas for these kits are and what you would do with them. And if there are any other kits you would change if you could. Thanks again for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the flip side. Peace.